A very good morning and welcome to this virtual worship service from St. Martin's Church, Daily Contonement. Today is the 24th Sunday after Pentecost and the theme for our meditation this morning is the Great Commandment. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and he who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. May we praise God by singing the opening hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. May we all pray together. The collect found on your screens, please pray along with me. The collect that will appear on the screens, please pray along with me. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us, we pray, the gifts of faith, hope and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Grant us to love what you command, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. 
Amen. We shall now have ministry of the word. The Old Testament reading has been taken from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verses 2 to 8. In his controversy with Israel, God asks only for justice, love and humility. Here, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you endearing foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt, and redeemed you from the house of bondage. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, devised, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him. And what happened to Shittim, to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord, and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God? Here ends the lesson. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. The responsive reading has been taken from Psalm chapter 24 verses 1 to 6. And your response shall be, The righteous is loving and merciful. The earth is the Lord's, and all that therein is, the compass of the world, and they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. The righteous is loving and merciful. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, and that hath not set his mind upon vain things, nor sworn to his neighbor deceitfully. The righteous is loving and merciful. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and recompense from the God of his salvation. Such is the portion of them that seek him, even of them that seek thy face, O God of Jacob. The righteous is loving and merciful. This is the word of the Lord. विश्वास उस प्रेम पर टिकाया है जो परमेश्वर ने हमारे लिए है परमेश्वर प्रेम है और जो प्रेम में स्थिर रहता है वह परमेश्वर में स्थिर रहता है और जो परमेश्वर में स्थिर रहता है हमारे विषय में इसी रूप में प्रेम सिद्ध हुआ है ताकि न्याय के दिन हमें विश्वास बना रहे हमारा यह विश्वास इसलिए बना हुआ है कि हम जगत में जो जीवन जी रहे हैं वह मसीह के जीवन जैसा है प्रेम में कोई भय नहीं होता बल्कि संपूर्ण प्रेम तो भय को भगा देता है भय का संबंध तो दंड है सो जिसमें भय है उसके प्रेम को भी पूर्ता नहीं मिलती हम प्रेम करते हैं क्योंकि पहले परमेश्वर ने हमसे प्रेम किया यदि कोई कहता है मैं परमेश्वर को प्रेम करता हूँ और अपने भाई से घृणा करता है तो वह झूठा है क्योंकि अपने भाई को जिसे उसने देखा है जब वह प्रेम नहीं करता तो परमेश्वर को जिसने उससे नहीं देखा वह प्रेम नहीं कर सकता मसीह से हमें ये आदेश मिला है वह जो परमेश्वर को प्रेम करते हैं उसने अपने भाई से भी प्रेम करना चाहिए ये परमेश्वर का वचन है इसके पढ़े और सुने जाने पे आशीष हो
Jesus replies to the question of the scribe by saying that the commandment to love God and our neighbor is the greatest of all. The Holy Gospel is found recorded in the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark verses 28 to 34. Glory to you, Christ Jesus. One of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another and seeing that he answered them well, asked him which commandment is the first of all. Jesus answered, the first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, <clears throat> with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to be one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. Amen. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Friends, I'm happy to announce the names of those who, from St. Martin's Church family, who would be celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries during the coming week. We have Mr. <coughs> Marcus Kumar, Stephen Baroy, Joyce Victor, Dr. Sangeeta Rani Tigga, Captain Benjamin Jeffrey, Luke Massey, Anna Belle Peters, Aruna Rachel, and Sumit Falls would be celebrating their birthdays. Wing Commander Archana and Wing Commander Rajesh Nambiar, Reniqua and Colonel Vinod Milton, Selma and Rajesh Singh, Suman and Atul John, Asha and Santosh Singh will celebrate their wedding anniversaries. I publish the bands of marriage between Rohit Paul and Priyal Massey. Rohit Paul is the son of Mr. Robinson Paul. Priyal Massey is the daughter of Prebe Job. Rohit is member of our own church, St. Martin's, and Priyal Massey is the member of Centenary Methodist Church, Lodi Road, Delhi. Both Rohit is a bachelor and Priyal is a spinster. If any one of you knows any just cause why these two may not lawfully marry, you are to declare it in writing to the presbyter in charge of this church. This is the first time of asking. Let us offer a prayer for all of them. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we have pronounced the names of your children who are celebrating their birthdays, wedding anniversaries, and those about to get married. We pray your special blessings to be upon each one of them and pray, Heavenly Father, that you would bless them in such a way that they in turn would become a blessing for others. Bless them abundantly in health, wealth, and happiness, and the couples with mutual love, mutual understanding, and above all, love and faith in you. We commit each one of them into your mighty care and ask this prayer in the precious, mighty, sweet, and holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. I am extremely delighted for the gospel reading which is read before us and my delight lies in this reading because it is my favorite portion in the bible 
why it is my favorite portion that you will understand and as the reading goes and one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well asked him which is the first commandment of all and jesus answered him the first of all commandment is hear israel the lord our god is one god and you and thou shall love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength this is the first commandment i will later go on into the second but let us look at this first commandment and you and then we will be able to understand better the second one what does it mean from where does this originate let us turn to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and over here it is written in verse 4 here o Israel the Lord our God is one God and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart with all thy soul and with all thy might let us analyze this word by word what does it mean to hear what does the text say to hear and why it is the first and the great commandment indeed it is a very great commandment the first word says hear in hebrew it means shema Shema of Israel, Adonai, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Echad. Echad means one. Eloheinu means God. It comes from the word Elohim. Adonai is Lord. Hear, O Israel, Shema O Israel. So what does the word Shema mean? Shema means to listen. Is it just to listen? Or is it to listen attentively? Or is it to listen? So what does listening over here means? It is something very easy to say here. In the Bible, you will see that in many places the word here is used shemon 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 is is a is a name which was given to one of the child of jacob and it is there his mother says to the Lord that if you give me a child don't let me be ashamed in front of everyone and the Lord hears and that is why she names him Shemon Shemon Shema comes from the word Shema because the Lord has listened to me and it is here God is saying Hear, O Israel, listen, O Israel, listen, O descendants of Israel, listen, O people of Israel. But it is just Israel. Then why do we are so passionate about it? I am very passionate, particularly, I am very passionate about this whole verse. I am so much passionate about this whole verse that nothing can turn me away from this verse. It doesn't matter who or what is placed, but it says, 
Hear Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord, is, is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. This is what is expected of us. So the word Shema or Israel, oh sorry, or hear means to listen and to listen attentively. But there is something more to this word. It is just not to listen to the words that are being spoken, but it also means to listen to the voice of God, the soft voice of God, to listen to the breath of God, to listen to the love of God. And when we listen, we also respond. And when we listen, we just not respond, we also obey. And when we listen, we just not obey, we also give respect. So the word Shema is just one word, but it has a meaning which is just not here in English. If we read, it says here, but here is just not the end of it. It means to hear and respond. It means to hear and be attentive. It means to hear and to be respectful. It means to hear and to obey. And it is here the greatest commandment is that you shall love the Lord thy God. See, if we break down this, hear O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. This is an ordinance. And what follows is the action. So, what happens when we listen to God, when we, when we obey the Lord, when we talk about God, and this is what is there in the Bible. If, if, if I go further, immediately after the greatest commandment, there is a duty. And the duty lies with the parents. And what does it say? And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk to them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be at the frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of the house and on thy gates. Do you believe that? And if you ever want to see, you can always see it. You can come to my house and on my doorpost there's a mezuzah and it has the shema. And as I told you in the beginning, that it is the, fav uh, the, passion uh, the passionate, the favorite uh, verse of mine in the Bible. I'm very enthusiastic about it. And it is here the Bible says that we as parents have the duty to teach it to our children, to tell it to our children. Do you know that when we want 
our children to focus on something. In Hebrew, they say, Shema Shema. That means to focus, to pay attention. And it is here what God wants us. That our children should pay attention. And it is we as parents have the duty to tell it to our children, to pass it on to down to our generations. And somewhere we have failed in that. We have the duty to teach our children about the love of God. And it is only when we tell them about the love of God, the second verse comes in. The second part of the verse comes in. Love your neighbor as yourself. It is not that Jesus spoke this word in the New Testament of his own but it is there in the Old Testament, right in the book of Leviticus. It says in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. The Lord is saying the law of love. It is here he is giving the law of love. It is here the Lord himself has said and it is sealed in the gospel. The greatest commandment, Shema Israel, Adonai Enohenu, Elohenu Adonai Ekad and the second part goes as love thy neighbor as thyself. What does the word thyself mean? As oneself, as own, a human loves himself or herself the most. That is the essence of human life. It requires to be a saint to come out of oneself. It requires that godly spirit to come out of oneself. I'll just play, give you a sh short human behavior and after that I'll close. There are four types of human behavior. First is godly, second is humanly, third is animal, and fourth is devilish. So first is godly, second is human, third is animal, and fourth is devilish. Godly behavior is if I don't have it, and if you don't have it, I will work that at least you have it. That is godly behavior. The second is human behavior. I have it, you don't have it, but I will share with you and we both have it. That is human behavior. The third is animal behavior. You have it, I have it. I'll finish mine and start watching yours. But the fourth is devilish behavior. The devilish behavior says, you don't have it, I don't have it, but I will do everything within my power that you also don't have it. Most of the time we live either in animal behavior or in devilish behavior. It is only 
through the intervention of God that we come to human behavior. And it is only through the spirit that leads the saints, they achieve the godly behavior like Mother Teresa. Love is the essence of God creating this world. We are the instrument of God. We need to recognize God as the Lord and as one God. There is only one Lord, even for us. And we need to teach it to our children, no matter how big they are or how small they are. It is our given duty by a creator who has created us. If you still want the reference of where this duty lies, I will give it to you so that I don't stand in fault that I have not said it. It is in chapter Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 6 to 9. I hope sometime we may open and read it. The du it says the duty of parents. And it is now for us to look how we express our love not only towards God but also towards others. We need to love them as oneself. We need to love God. We need to love our neighbor. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who showed us the paramount of love by giving his life on the cross so that we may be saved, that the precious, the most precious of all creation may be saved, and through us, this creation may be saved. Bless us, O Lord, so that we may realize that it is you who is our Lord, that it is you that we draw our strength, that through you the love comes in our life and that through you we need to spread love with those who are around us. Give us the strength so that we may follow it as written in the law, that we may follow it as we have been taught by your son, that we may not only follow it, but also teach it to our generations. We ask this prayer in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our intercession, let us join our prayer for the whole human family with the unceasing prayer of Christ the Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for justice and peace in the world and fullness of life to everyone. Lord, in your mercy. For all who live in this place, for Delhi, 
and NCR for the removal of all that divides us from each other and for true harmony in our country. Lord, in your mercy. For all engaged in agriculture, industry and commerce, for all workers skilled and unskilled, and for all those who defend our country. Lord, in your mercy. For teachers and students, scientists, artists, and writers, and for all who influence the minds and hearts of others, Lord, in your mercy. For those who are suffering, the poor and hungry, the destitute and oppressed, the unemployed, the sick and dying, and for all who help them, Lord, in your mercy. For all to whom authority is entrusted in this and other countries, and especially for our President, the Prime Minister, the Lieutenant Governor, the Chief Minister of Delhi, and for all who have power over other people, Lord, in your mercy. For the unity of all Christian people and for their witness and service in the world, Lord, in your mercy. For your whole church in our country, for its councils and leaders, especially for Peace Singh, our bishop and moderator, A. Dharamraj Rasallam, moderator of Church of South India, and Mar Theodosius, Metropolitan of Marthoma Church, for Sunil Gazan and Samuel Shekhar, our presbyters, and for all other ministers of your church, that they may be faithful in their ministry. Lord, in your mercy. That with all your people who have faithfully served you in this life, we all may share in the eternal joy of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hasten, Heavenly Father, the coming of your kingdom and grant these petitions which we offer in the name of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Confession of Sin Beloved, our Lord Jesus Christ said, The Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith Formally resolved by God's grace to keep his commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Let us say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against one another in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who forgive one another and truly repent of their sins, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us share this peace of God with one another. Beloved in Christ, making peace with one another is what the Lord expects of all the believers. He sent his only son into this world that he might die for our sins and shed his precious blood. But if we do not make peace with one another and forget the very sacrifice made for our sake, we are guilty in his sight. Let us remember that he taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sins 
for we also have forgiven those who have sinned against us. If you are about to offer your gift at the altar, and there you remember that you have something against your brother, leave your gift at the altar. First, go and be reconciled, so then come and offer your gift at the altar. Beloved in Christ, this is the time for us to reconcile and make peace with those we hold grudges against. Remembering that we are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share this peace with one another as we remain standing. Let us sing our offertory hymn. Friends, as we sing the offertory hymn, we are getting a good feedback from people and some of them have asked how they could contribute towards the ministry of St. Martin's Church. So the facility UPI will appear on the screen. You may like to use it if you wish. Let us sing our offertory hymn. Let us present these offerings and with them ourselves for the service of the Divine Majesty. All things come from you and of your own do we give you. Almighty God, Creator of the world, we ask you to accept these offerings and gifts for the glory of your name and the good of your people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray.
Let us receive God's blessings. And now unto God's gracious mercy and protection we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of you and with all your dear ones wherever they may be and especially in each and every home that has watched and participated in this worship service now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, as we sing the uh, closing hymn, may I remind you that coming Sunday will be our Remembrance Day at 8.30 a.m. in the morning, immediately followed by the observance and celebration of St. Martin's Day. So if you are vaccinated and ready to follow the DDMA SOP and COVID appropriate behavior, you are most welcome to join this special service at 8.30 in the morning next Sunday. Also the uh, AGM will be on the uh, 21st of November which is the following Sunday. The names of the voters is placed on the notice board. There are six vacancies. Those of you who are desirous and are in good standing with the church may please take their uh, nomination forms and fill them. Let us sing our closing hymn and before that may I express my heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Alvin Theodore, Mr. John Manohar, Mr. Nitin, who are responsible for producing this beautiful worship service that you participated in. May God bless all of them, bless our church, and bless all those who have watched this worship service. May we sing our closing hymn.
serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.